Welcome to the Christian Church on a Sunday afternoon, August the 24th, 2014. I thank God for what he did in here yesterday evening. We had a wonderful time. We had a wonderful service. We talked about a man's home being his ministry. We talked about the fact that God wants, he wants to commit his word to faithful men. Not unfaithful men, but faithful men that will be able to teach others. So if I stay faithful in the things that God has asked me to do, then I am qualified to teach others the truth as well. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because your lifestyle is your biggest voice. What people see going on in your life is more of a reflection of whether or not you love God or not than just you simply saying, I love God and I believe in Jesus, his son. Amen. This thing has to be lived out. Last week, we talked, we preached from Titus chapter number one, and there's a couple of verses I didn't get to cover. I'm going to cover those and then get into Titus chapter two, because we're talking on the lines of homes have to be ran by people with integrity. If you don't have the integrity and the character that God wants you to be, then you're not going to have a home of peace, a home where love is, a home where joy is, the things that God has given us, which are the fruit of the Spirit. We must be not only in right relationship with God, we must be in right relationship with one another. Amen? Our families are more important when it comes to the, to the order. We love God first. We love our, our families it, whether you're a wife and you have husband, husband and have a wife, and your children. Oh, in that lines. And then number three is your church family. And number four is your relationship with the rest of the world. Meaning the unbelievers or those who may not have even heard the gospel. But we must get everything in order. Our homes in order to stand... They can't be divided. You can't be husband, have husband and wife at each other's throat fighting for control over the home. When God has put us in a home and we're supposed to be operating and running that home together, my wife and I have different responsibilities, but we have the same goal, and that is to run a godly household. Amen? Yeah. In order for that to happen, she must be in agreement with me, beside me, not behind me. I'm not better than her, she's not better than me. But if she's beside me, which is where God took woman out of man's side, right, the rib. And so, if we're walking beside each other, step in step, then we can properly raise the children and teach the children the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Whenever we get things out of whack, we end up with dysfunctional homes and our kids grow up a lot of times with a lot of that dysfunction still in their hearts. Whether it's anger, whatever it is for what they saw going on in their home as they grew up. Whether there was favoritism, whether there were bad things happening between mommy and daddy, whatever it is, is what we do affects our children. And so God is calling for men to lead by their example, not by I'm the boss applesauce. Amen? We're supposed to lead by example. And that way our, our wives would follow. I think that a godly woman has no problem following a man that has all his screws together in his head. If you got screws loose, it's kind of hard to follow somebody that's going nowhere, right? Amen. Amen. And so we, you know, it's important for more men to step up because ministries are full of women because a lot of the men are too busy chasing after their worldly pleasures and lusts rather than living up to their responsibility and taking care of their post, which is supposed to be the example setter, the trend setter in the home is supposed to be a man that is under the authority of Christ. For the Bible says the head of Christ is God, the head of the woman is the man, and the head of man is Christ. Amen? Amen. And so, as the head and has the one that has the you know, most responsibility put on me, 
I must love my wife as Christ loved the church and give myself for her, sanctify her through the washing of the water by the word. When I'm teaching and preaching the word, she can hear the word and know exactly how we operate. It's not superiority. It's us walking in right standing with God. And then when the two become one, when my thinking and her thinking can connect with each other, then there's power, amen? We can kick the devil right out of our house. We can identify where he's attacking, and we can stamp him out in the name of Jesus, amen? But let's get to the word of the day. The word of the day is starting in Titus chapter number 1, beginning at verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and un believing is nothing pure but even their minds and consciences and, and even their mind and consciences defiled that means that if you're holy you can identify things that are pure because you're living according to the truth of God but to somebody that's unbelieving nothing's pure in other words there's there's they're paranoid. They're suspect about everything. Everybody's talking about me. They're pointing. They must be talking about me. They must think something's wrong with me. You understand what I'm saying? And there are people that live under this type of deception. And because of that, they end up destroying their relationships and friendships with people based on their belief that the whole world is against them. Now, this is very dangerous because we've seen people turn into killers because of this. We've seen people, you know, when you get to a point where you think the whole world's against you, that the devil can you cause your heart to get so cold that you can hurt somebody and not even think twice about it. And we got people out here that are in this type of danger. If they don't let God deliver them, they'll end up hurting themselves and others. And they'll have no soft spot in their heart. And they'll end up paying for it in eternity because God has got a reward for them. And it is not heaven. You understand what I'm saying? It will be eternal separation from God. It will be torment and pain that they have never experienced or could ever imagine because they have hurt people in this life. And God tells us to love our neighbor as ourself, right? He doesn't tell us to bash our neighbor. He doesn't tell us to condemn our neighbor. He doesn't tell us to go out and do everything we can to try to tear people down just to make ourselves feel good. You understand? We're to serve God and serve him with a pure heart. Verse 16 they profess that they know God, meaning they're hypocrites, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. But in works, they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. So that means their mind thinks the opposite. They think wrong is right and they think right is wrong. That's a dangerous place to be. Don't ever agree with wickedness. Don't ever call it good. Don't ever try to find some good in something that is evil. Because God said either the tree is good and it's fruit good or the tree is evil and the fruit evil. But don't try to mix good and evil. The world does that. You know what they call it? They call it yin yang. If you see those symbols and there are symbols for this stuff, get it out of your house. Yin yang is old Chinese witchcraft that says... There's a little good in the worst of us, and there's a little bad in the best of us. So it's mixing evil and good. Well, the Bible says a good tree can't bring forth evil fruit. You understand? Either you're right with God or you're not. And just because a person may do one thing one minute, might seem like they're good and they're doing good, and then they turn around and they flip the script on you and do something totally, totally off the wall. It's because it was already in them to do wrong. You understand what I'm saying? They were just putting on a front. They're putting, you know, there are people called con artists that can trick you into thinking that they mean the best for you when in actuality they're trying to harm you or they're trying to manipulate you and use you and get something out of you. You understand? There are people like that everywhere. 
when you see when people call you and tell you you want a cruise, they're trying to manipulate you. You ain't want no cruise. You ain't even put your name in no contest. So you got to be careful of the tricks that people who are led of the devil are given. And sometimes people can sit under preaching and teaching and still be wicked in their heart. They can still hide things in their heart that they hadn't that they have not confessed to God. And as an example, they live in guilt, they live in condemnation and shame. Why? Because they haven't allowed God to come in and deliver them for what it is that bothers them and has plagued them. But you know what? If they would somehow repent, God would forgive them, restore them. They could possibly restore relationships and and mend bridges that have been burned. Isn't it funny when a person don't want to hang around you, why is it they want to go and burn a bridge? They not only want to attack you, they want to attack people who are close to you and people that you love. And they say things that aren't true, but they're only trying to justify their own wrongdoing. See, there are many people like that. Not just one or two people. There are lots of people who live like that. And the Bible is saying that these people are reprobate. They're warped in their mind. Nothing is ever good to them. No matter where they go and you give them something good, they'll still have something bad to say. You understand? Those are the type of people you want to avoid like the plague. You understand what I'm saying? Because misery loves company. So you don't want to be miserable. Life's too short. God didn't put you here to be miserable for the rest of your life. So some people have to have to understand that, you know what, if you want to stay like that, then you need to get off to yourself somewhere because you're going to affect all the good people around you that want to do the right thing. Yeah. Let's get to Titus chapter 2. It says, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, meaning tell the truth. Preach the truth. If pastors would stop doing wrong and start preaching the truth, in which the only truth there is is found in the Word of God. Not twisted, but just telling people the truth. Telling them, look, we got to live better than this if we want to be ready for Jesus when he comes. Verse 2. That the aged men be sober, grave, that means you, you're serious. You're not, you're not taking life for a joke. That means you're serious and sober about what you're thinking. Temperate, meaning you have control of yourself. You can, you know, you're even killed. You don't get too high and you don't get too low. Sound in faith, mm. in charity. That's agape love. In patience. Yeah. That means, you know, sometimes people aren't, you know, sometimes you try to love on people even though you know that those people have issues you still love them you don't hate them because some of those people might be in your home and you have to love them and pray for them at the same time you have to be open and honest and tell them look what you're doing is hurting me i can't continue to allow you to hurt me like this you need to realize that life is about more than about you understand and that people will understand that and be more sensitive to other people's feelings, then maybe we would, this world would be a better place to live in. You know what I mean? But people, I don't know, some people can just hurt you and they don't think they've done anything wrong. Well, whether they have or haven't, at least talk about it and, and because they may realize, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't know that that was going to hurt you. I didn't mean it for, I mean, you know, is, is that hard? No. Some of the arguments and fights and some marriages would be, you know, a whole lot better off if the other person could realize that that other person next to them is not a puppet. They have feelings and they need the same love and affection as they expect you to give them. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 3. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. That means women shouldn't be sitting around the bar getting drunk, waiting for somebody else's man to take them home. You understand what I'm saying? 
these older women are supposed to be teaching these young women to be women and not to be something, you know, less than what a woman should be like. Amen? That's why you can't follow these singers like Beyonce, which is teaching women to be nasty, you know? They're not teaching these girls to be godly women. They're teaching them that if you want things in life, you got to, to show your body and you got to sell your body and do all these nasty things to be popular. Ain't nothing popular about that. It's nothing cool about that. No real man wants a woman that spreads herself like that. You understand? He wants a woman that has a good head on her shoulders, that, that's hard working and, you know, staying out of trouble and just, just, you know, genuinely nice person to be with. They don't want somebody that's a woman that's loud and boisterous and cursing and doing all these other kinds of things. So we're supposed to be teaching, the young, older women are supposed to teach the young women how to be women, and the older men are supposed to teach the young men how to be men and not thugs. Wearing your pants hanging off your honey. You know, that doesn't... That doesn't make you a man. That doesn't make you cool. That makes you something else. You understand what I'm saying? So I have to tell my children, you know, beware of the traps out here. There are traps that the enemy sets for you to try to mess up your future. Focus on your education. Focus on, you know, serving the Lord and staying out of drug trouble and not doing drugs and not getting drunk and not doing the things that people say are cool and not getting on every social media site that's out there. There's a lot of danger on these websites. You know, if we would get some of these websites off people's phones, maybe their grades would improve, you think? Society would be a whole lot better place if we didn't have all this junk going on on the internet. Now there are good things that are going on the internet and things that, that are very helpful, but you got, to, you got to be very careful even on your computer because pop-ups can pop up that you don't even expect. So you got to always be on your guard about what, what you're listening to. It says that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands. Wow, not somebody else's man. Boy, isn't there an epidemic of that going on? To love their children. You got a lot of women that, that care more about themselves than their own children. That's a shame. You know, God gave you those, you know, you have a responsibility for your children. You know, the Bible says children are the heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb, womb is his reward. It says to be discreet, meaning, like you said, you're, you're conservative. You're not spreading yourself. You're not dressing in a way that gets the wrong type of attention, bringing attention to yourself. Chase, that means pure. Keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Okay? So we got women out here that need to learn, hey, if my man is serving God, then I can be I can follow him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can follow his example as he's serving Christ and together we walk step in step. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. That means that means you you got good sense. That means you're not, you know, you're not putting drugs and things in your body to alter your thinking. You understand what I'm saying? And all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness. That means there's no, you're not deceitful, you're not crooked. Gravity, meaning once again, you, you know, you're serious about things. You're not joking around and acting childish about everything. But you're, you're mature and you're grown up. Sincerity. That means truth. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. Verse 9. Exhort servants to be obedient to their own masters and to please them well in all things 
not answering again. This is not talking about slavery. This is like if you're if you're working and you have a boss, you need to show respect to your boss. You know, you 